Good morning, I'm Jordan Slocum, and this is the Doan College Review on 90.5 KUTT. Every Saturday morning from 8 until 8.30, we take a look at what's going on around Doan College athletics, academics, arts, and more. On today's program, we hear from Doan head baseball coach Jeremy Jorgensen. We also talk with men's soccer coach Jeff Voigt, and we hear from David Swartzlander, who is the journalism and media department chair at Doan. But first, we start with the baseball team. Snow's on the ground, temperatures around freezing, really feels like baseball weather. Well, not really, but believe it or not, the baseball season will be coming up on Friday, as the team will be traveling down to Louisiana next weekend. I had a chance to talk with head baseball coach Jeremy Jorgensen about the upcoming series, as well as the offseason, and how things are going with the team. First off, coach, it's hard to believe that next week is the start of the baseball season, but looking at the team, what are your overall thoughts heading into this opener? Yeah, I mean, I think the guys have been working uh, very hard, bringing a lot of good intensity to uh, practice here in the, uh, you know, I guess we call them indoor workouts because uh, too many times we can get outside. But, uh, you know, overall uh, making pretty good progress and uh, looking forward to get going outside. How difficult is it to start preparing in January and February when it's not really baseball weather? Yeah, I, you know, I think it's the challenge of uh, – keeping guys focused and uh, keeping guys on track to that, uh, you know, to keep getting rep quality reps in and, um, you know, always getting better. I mean, that's tough, obviously, when you go in the same place every time and uh, you're on a rubber surface and trying to get, uh, you know, true sense of ground balls and things like that. But uh, our guys do a great job of staying focused and understanding that that's what we're dealing with and can't use it as an excuse. I mean, when we go down and play in Louisiana in a week and a half, uh, they don't really care whether we've been inside, outside, or upside down. So, uh, you know, you got to still go and play and compete. And, um, uh, you know, I think our guys take it as a challenge and um, uh, look forward to it. This is the Doan College Review on 90.5 KUTT, talking to Doan baseball coach Jeremy Jorgensen. How have the freshmen and newcomers to the team gotten acclimated in this last month? Yeah, I think they've come along pretty well. I mean, you know, they can sense that the, you know, their freshman season is coming up pretty quick, and you know, I think guys are getting excited about it. We're playing a good team down in Louisiana. They're ranked, uh, I think, 24th in the country, and so uh, it's a good test for us right off the bat. And you know, I think we've got some uh, young guys, but uh, we've got some very talented guys, and uh, with the experience we have on on offense coming back, um, you know, we're excited to get going. With the team as a whole, has anything surprised you over the last month or so? Uh, good question. I, you know, I've been happy with the uh, focus out of the guys. I think, uh, you know, they're ready to go, but they're also being very focused in how they go about their business, doing their preparation, realize how important it is uh, to make sure they're getting their work in, even if we're inside, doesn't matter. And uh, you know, I think that's a credit to the older guys setting the tone for you know, what the expectations are in the indoor workouts and how you have to do your preparation, whether that's your conditioning, um, arm care, getting your swings in, all those kind of things. They just, you know, they go about their business and, and go about it the right way, and, you know, that'll, that'll help us in the long run. Again, this is the Doan College Review talking to Doan baseball coach Jeremy Jorgensen. Has anybody really stood out in terms of leadership in these initial workouts? Uh, I think, especially on our pitching staff, guys like Spencer Pugh and Tanner Meyer and um, Zach Jensen and uh, Tyler McKee, those are kind of four of our upperclassmen on the pitching staff that do a great job of setting the tone day in and day out and, um, you know, showing the younger guys how to, uh, you know, in essence, be a professional and go about getting your work in and, and doing what you need to do to get ready to start the season, so... Um, on the offensive side, we got guys like Dylan Matthews, who's from Lincoln Southwest, who's you know fourth year senior for us. Um, Bryce Rollins out of Seward, Zach Kuchera from Waverly. Um, you know guys like that that uh, know how to work and and get ready. And it's you know it's their fourth year of being in the field house. And um, but you, I don't think you would know it because they know what they need to do to get ready and. You know, nothing you can do about the weather, and so we just uh, we just ad- adapt and um, 
wait for warmer days. Well, part of the reason for going to Louisiana to start the season is it will be warmer there. It's one of the longer trips you have over the course of the season. How do you handle having such a long trip? Well, I think just try to break it up. And, um, you know, part of playing college sports is the, you know, unique opportunities you get to see different parts of the country. And uh, we've never gone to Louisiana before. And uh, the way this worked out in our schedule and timing of the year, it, um, you know, felt like a good opportunity to show the guys a different part of the country, play a, uh, you know, a nationally ranked team and um, hopefully get, you know, get the games in, obviously, with good weather. When you go that far, you want to make sure you play. So um, so I think it'll be a good, you know, team-building experience right off the bat, playing a good team. And, uh, yeah, it's a long trip, but, you know, hopefully that also prepares guys for the spring so they get used to it pretty quick on, you know, what you got to do and, you know, things you got to accommodate for on a long trip. Again, we're talking to Doan College baseball coach Jeremy Jorgensen here on the Doan College Review. Now, as you mentioned, Louisiana State Alexandria, they're 24th in the preseason NAIA poll. What do you know about their team? Well, I know one of their top starters on the mound is a preseason All-American, so you know that's going to be a challenge right off the bat. Um, sounds like they graduated some guys last year, and so uh, you know I'm, I'm sure though with a you know a good program like that and a tradition, they'll you know they'll, they'll replace talented guys with more talented guys and you know i don't think it's a rebuilding year for them at all i think they're quality program and will continue to be year in and year out and so you know for us it's just an opportunity to go down there play our game and and then um you know just get up to game speed as quick as we can and compete and hopefully come away with some wins last question coach you touched on it a bit there but in this opening series and in the first few series of the season, what are the biggest things you're looking for on the diamond? Well, I think the biggest thing I think is just for our guys to come out and compete. Just, uh, you know, we're not expecting things to go perfect by any means. And that's kind of the game of baseball really is you just have to kind of constantly adjust and make adjustments and, and um, play against the game of baseball as best you can. And, and, you know, respond to what things happen, good or bad. So, um, you know, really what we're looking for is just kind of progress and learning and and, um, and competing. And so just try to find a way to grind out some wins and um, uh, compete. And then, you know, coming out of that series, what we're looking for is just, hey, what do we take away from that first weekend that will help us going into the, Uh, series the following weekend in Joplin and then just kind of build on that stuff throughout the year. My thanks to Doan College baseball coach Jeremy Jorgensen for that interview and again they'll be starting up the season with a four-game series next Friday and Saturday at Louisiana State University Alexandria. They'll be playing two games on Friday and two games on Saturday. Once again, you're listening to the Doan College Review on 90.5 KUTT. Coming up, we'll be talking to Jeff Voigt, head of the men's soccer team, and later we'll chat with David Swartzlander, the journalism and media department chair at Doan. It's a busy weekend for Doan College athletics, most notably the home Fred Biley track and field invite, which will be going on today. The action will get underway at noon. Also going on today, the basketball teams make the road trip to Mount Marty College. And the women's and men's tennis teams will be competing against Grandview University at the Fremont YMCA. As for results from this week, the snowstorm that came through on Wednesday pushed Doan's basketball doubleheader at Hastings back to Thursday. But it was well worth the wait, as both the men and women were victorious over Hastings for the first time since 2011, winning on the road. The men's final was 87-78. Riley Zimmerman led Doan with 27 points. The women's final was 58-57, defeating the 11th-ranked Broncos, and it's the second time in the last three games that the Doan women have knocked off a top-25 opponent. Heather Broman led the team with 18 points. Additionally, the Doan dance team competed against Hastings, and Hastings was victorious. Final score was 97-89.
The wrestling team was also set to have senior night on Wednesday against Dakota Wesleyan, but because of the snow, Dakota Wesleyan could not make the trip. That has been rescheduled, though, and that meet will be held on Monday at 7 o'clock, as Doan will host senior night against Dakota Wesleyan. The track and field teams competed on Saturday in Seward at the Concordia Classic, most notably the women's distance medley relay team of Marissa Moore, Sydney Holtmeyer, Sarah Kotwitz, and Marissa DeWispeler set a new school record with a time of 12 minutes and 11.28 seconds. The time is also currently the top time in the entire NAIA this season. Additionally, for her role on that team and for a strong effort in the 3,000-meter run, Marissa DeWispeler was named the GPAC Women's Track Athlete of the Week. This past week was National Signing Day, which gets the most attention for football, but does include other sports. With the Doan football team, they announced the addition of 42 players will be joining the program in the fall. 25 of those players are from the state of Nebraska. The Doan Athletics Twitter account, at DoanTSN, has also been retweeting a number of additions as Doan signed a number of great athletes throughout various sports. Again, follow at DoanTSN to see more of that. As mentioned when we interviewed baseball coach Jeremy Jorgensen, it really doesn't feel like baseball weather right now. It also doesn't really feel like soccer weather either, but the offseason is in full swing for the Doan soccer programs and for men's head coach Jeff Voigt. I had an opportunity to talk with him earlier this week. First off, coach, looking at recruiting over the last few months, how have things gone? Actually pretty good. Have a couple of big needs and I think we filled them, so, so, so far so good. How many different players have you added to the newest class? Um, so far we're at four, I believe, three goalkeepers, which we, we lost kind of four years starting, um, senior, obviously. So we, that's our biggest need. So we've spent a lot of time searching for goalkeepers. And I think we've found a couple to come in and challenge for that spot. So we're an attacking player from Texas as well. That's that we're pretty, pretty high on right now. So. What are some of the biggest challenges you face when you go out to recruit with a school like Doan? Um, really, the location. So most of uh, most of the the recruiting venues, the kids are coming from bigger cities. So just the the, the idea of coming to a smaller um, town and spending the next four years of their life. Talking to Doan men's soccer coach Jeff Voigt here on the Doan College Review. Yeah, that probably adds some extra difficulty where in this state in particular, you know, a lot of the high schools that the other sports can draw from, the smaller schools, don't have soccer programs. So you have to look to Class B and Class A if you're going to get kids from this state at least. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and most, of, most of those uh, smaller towns that a lot of the other sports draw on don't, don't even have really soccer programs. A lot of those kids, they don't have it growing up, so they don't have it once they're older, and they go into you know, something else, which makes it tougher Correct. for you guys. A little bit, yeah. So that means you usually have to probably focus more probably out of state, too, than a lot of the other sports. Well, we, we, we do, but that's for different different reasons. A lot of uh, it was down the road, one of our, our friends down the road has had a lot of success for – you know, 14 plus years. So a lot of those good to 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 average players head there. So trying to break that pipeline up has been been a challenge. But but we're making progress. Again, this is the Doan College Review on 99.5 KUTT, talking to Doan men's soccer coach Jeff Voigt. Do you notice any differences from when you started at Doan to now in terms of how you go about recruiting? Not, not, not really. It's still networking, still marketing, still getting out and uh, and keeping those relationships alive with the uh, directors of coaching and various clubs throughout the the country. So, um, you know, it's getting it's getting a little easier because we are starting to get a little bit of consistency um, on and off the field. So. Switching to the team, what off-season work have you been able to get in with them? 
Well, our spring season actually starts when the, when the kind of the weather changes. When we get outside. Right now, we're just just doing maintenance, some strength building, some explosive stuff, just to try and get um, a bit quicker and a bit stronger. So right now, it's um, really about them making sure that their schoolwork and they're on top of that, and and they're just kind of recovering from the grueling season. What areas jump out as strengths with the players that you'll have back? Ooh. I think um, probably for the first time since I've been here, which next fall will be our fifth year, um, I think offensively will be a strength for us, whereas in the last four years we've been, been fairly solid defensively. So um, I look forward to, to seeing if we can't be a little more creative, a little more dynamic in the final third. And, uh, and that's about it. We lost a, a lot of leadership, so we're trying to build some of that in this off season as well. Get some, get some of the younger guys to step up. Again, talking to Don Men's soccer coach Jeff Voigt. In terms of leadership, is there anybody who has stood out of those coming back? Yeah, we've had a, a three-year leader um, who who will be a senior next year. He's he's the only one remaining. So we have a few younger guys that are that are filling in and and starting to 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 pick up on that and hold hold each other accountable. So, um, but we are fortunate that we've had a what will be next year a four-year captain. Last question, coach. In the coming months, what are some of the biggest goals you have for your team? Um, when we get outside, it'll be, uh, just, just getting back after it, just working hard and continuing the process of getting a little bit better and a little more consistent. So I, I think working hard every day, um, through the winter, through the spring, and just hopefully, uh, come next fall, we're, we're a little more consistently, uh, stable. And then peaks and valleys will will hopefully be a little less. Again, my thanks to Doan men's soccer coach Jeff Voigt for that interview here on the Doan College Review. Again, we thank you for listening to the Doan College Review. I'm Jordan Slocum. This program runs from 8 to 8.30 every Saturday morning on 99.5 KUTT, featuring interviews from folks around Doan College athletics, academics, and more. If you missed a part of an episode or want to listen back to a previous episode, head online to doanathletics.com. We wrap up today's program with an interview with David Swartzlander. David is the Journalism and Media Department Chair at Doan. First off, David, as I understand, in the fall, Doan's journalism program will be expanding a bit. And tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, we have had for a few years now a journalism and media program, but we're changing that. Um, we are going to call it media communication, um, and you know we'll still have journalism because uh, I'm I'm a former journalist, so that's important to me. But we want to expand beyond journalism because we're finding that um, a lot of students, well, most students, want to do things other than strictly journalism with media. And it seems, as somebody who works in media, I know especially the last few years, there's been more of a trend, too, where jobs are very much, you have to wear multiple hats, so to speak. Exactly right. I mean, if you're a print reporter, you have to learn how to shoot video, you have to learn how to you know, gather audio and shoot photos. And if you're on the broadcast side, you have to, well, you always didn't have to have to write, but, um, you you know, you have more, um, you know, more issues with editing, editing stuff, editing printed word, that kind of thing for the website. So uh, everybody's got to do a little bit more if they want to be marketable and have a job. This is the Doan College Review on 99.5 KUTT, talking to David Swartzlander, Journalism and Media Department Chair. What new courses are going to be available in the fall? Well, we'll uh, have a new course um, on web design, which is actually taught through the art department. So 
our majors is um, uh, somewhat interdepartmental in that um, you know, we have a couple of art uh, classes that students will have to take. Um, so there's a web design course, which we've never had before, and our alums all have told us that's the one class we probably need to add. Um, they'll, there's another class as well about digital media. It's called Introduction to Digital Media. I may not have the title correct, but um, it's basically you learn the tools that you'll you'll need to use for, um, you know, doing whatever work you need to do with digital media. What we do have plans for the future for different types of classes, too, especially in film studies. So we're, we're planning on an, uh, an introduction to film studies course. Um, we already do a filmmaking course, but we, we may expand those offerings, too. We're talking about a, a course of acting, um, acting for the camera kind of thing. Um, so... You know, we just we hired this year uh, a filmmaker to take the place of retired professor, and so we want to start doing more, um, more of those types of classes that suit his expertise. For example, we might uh, include a script writing course here in the near future. So we're trying to expand. That's the whole reason we went to media communication rather than journalism and media to try to expand those offerings for uh, to make us more attractive to um, to students. What are some of the areas that students have been most interested in with the department? Well, um, you know, uh, right now, um, in journalism and media, it's, it's heavily journalism-based. But what's happened, what I've noticed, is that our alums don't always go into journalism. Yes, we've had a few people who have gone into journalism. One, most notably, uh, got a job at NBC News in New York City right after graduation. And he's now working out of the London Bureau. But we have people who are involved in public relations, who you know, started public relations businesses, or who have done sports information kinds of things, or have one of our alums actually shot video for years for Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus, and, and recently you know, shot some videos for a, a singer. Um, so there are other... <laughs> There are other, uh, another one of our alums is, uh, was a speechwriter, and now he's a press secretary for, uh, in the U.S. Senate. So there are all kinds of job opportunities um, outside of the pure journalism world for our, um, for our alums, our graduates. And we would just want to expand that to, to make that um, more available to other students. Again, talking to David Swartzlander here on the Doan College Review. He's the Journalism and Media Department Chair. Now, one thing that Doan has had specifically more focused on journalism is Doan Line. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, Doan Line is our website um, for, uh, so we can, you know, we're a weekly newspaper at, uh, at Doan College, the Doan Owl. But with Doan Line, we can put all sorts of stuff on there. At any time, um, since it's our website, we can make it almost a daily newspaper. If you want, if you want, um, we can we you know we can put links up to our magazine, and we can stream radio and and perhaps video uh, in the near future on our website. And so that's very valuable to us. In addition, we have um, a Dome Student Media app. And so if people want to see what's going on journalistically anyway at Doan College, they can go to that app and, uh, and see all the news that's, that's on Doan Line. Um, what happens with Doan Line is that all of our students uh, usually contribute to it in some way, shape, or form, whether you're in the audio and, and video area or the print area, you usually provide some um, some value, some product for a dome line. So all all of our students um, are involved in it somehow. Again, talking to David Swartzlander here on the Doan College Review. When you look at the changes that have happened in journalism and in media over the last few years, what things really jump out to you that you try to explain to students? <laughs> That's well, that's a tough question because there's there's so many. You know, <laughs> uh, when I started in the business, we had manual typewriters. 
um, and you know, and you loaded the paper in and you typed on it. And then, of course, if you wanted to make changes, you had to actually cut and paste <laughs> um, using glue pots and scissors. You know, students don't have to do that kind of stuff anymore. Um, they're able to edit video, um, you know, without without actually cutting film. They can just do it on a, on a machine, on a computer. Um, the same thing with audio. Uh, the changes have been so quick and so so fast that for me, uh, you know, an old print journalist, it's been tough to keep up. The cool thing, though, is that students uh, grasp them immediately. And so what's really neat about... Um, about teaching at Doan College is that um, I teach them the, the old school stuff that still holds true today about, you know, getting information and sharing that information. And they end up actually teaching me about some of the newer things that are going on with digital media. So we, we work together. Um, we're, it's a very collaborative process. Again, we're talking with David Swartzlander, who is the Journal and Media Department Chair at Doan. What have been the biggest questions and concerns that students have been asking you about getting into this field? Uh, well, it's not the students so much as the parents. And parents are like, uh, will there be a jobs? <laughs> <laughs> and, and yes, there are jobs because, well, you know, I think back a, a few years. Well, back when I was in college, for example, there were three, four, three or four TV networks there was no internet. There was your local newspaper and, you know, radio stations, of course, and that was it. Now look at all the media that's available to people, um, and not just the information journalistic stuff, but um, all the entertainment types of programming, all the documentaries. There are so many channels on TV. You know, radio is is all over the place. It's still, radio still there, but you you can also get streaming radio. Um, everything's online. Uh, while newspapers may be declining, um, there's so much more media now than ever before. So are there jobs? Yes, there are jobs. And there are good jobs for students who want to work hard and, uh, and get into the business. Last question, David. For anybody who is listening who might be interested in the program, what's the best way to get involved and to get more info? Well, come to the campus. Um, you know, set up a visit. I'll be glad to meet with you. Uh, or if um, if you can't get to the get to the campus because there's too much snow or whatever, um, you know, contact me. I'm readily available. Um, you can you can go online and find my email address pretty easily, my phone number pretty easily. Um, but really the best thing is to uh, come to the campus, visit the campus, tour the campus, you know, meet with me or with my colleague David Sutera, the filmmaker, and, and we'll walk you through the, you know, the facilities that we have and tell you what we have to offer. Again, my thanks to David Swartzlander for that interview, and that'll wrap up today's edition of the Doan College Review here on 99.5 KUTT. A reminder, this program airs from 8 to 8.30 every Saturday morning here on 99.5 KUTT. If you missed part of this episode or want to listen back to previous episodes, head online to doanathletics.com, and links to the previous episodes are up there. For more on the university as a whole, you can always visit doan.edu and follow Doan College on Twitter, at Doan College. You can also follow the athletic department at Doan TSN, and most of the teams also have their own Twitter handle as well. Remember to also follow KUTT 995 on Twitter at KUTT 995 for the latest local news, sports, weather, and more. And if you really want, you can follow me on Twitter as well at Jordan Slocum and join my massive legion of 99 Twitter followers. You can be number 100. I'm Jordan Slocum. This has been the Doan College Review. Until next time, farewell. Farewell.